lychee mead from a can. All right, so we were at the Asian market. We were at the Asian market and we saw these cans of lychees and we're like, you know, how, how bad are their ingredients? Are they creepy, crazy ingredients? I would have thought there's no way I'd ever want to use it. Here's the ingredients, water, lychee, sugar, citric acid. That's it, no preservatives, no crazy stuff. And the sugars aren't even that much. There's four servings per can and there's 30 grams of sugar. So that's 120 grams of sugars per can, including the lychee. Yeah, so we're like, those aren't crazy ingredients. Those are something we could totally ferment with. Yeah. And for some reason, the idea of a lychee drizzled with honey just sounds mwah, beautiful. Yeah. And so they're thought, pull tab cans. I mean, let's you know. make lychee syrup. What we don't lychee. know is, is there pits in them? Yeah. This, this is an unknown. They're pitted! Glorious. This is awesome! This is beautiful. You have no idea. I was. We have put this one off for a couple weeks because I'm like, oh, I don't want to sit there. The unknown. It's a scary thing sometimes. But they're they're pitted. How beautiful is that? It and is we are using all the liquid and everything. We're keeping it all because that has some flavors in it, but it also has the sugars. All right, so we need a paper. A paper, we do. We also need, I'm going to get a fork so that I can mash those up a little bit. Can you sanitize that for me, Would you like this fork sanitized? I would like that fork sanitized. This fork has now been sanitized. Okay, so what she meant by paper is for note taking, and I'm just gonna mash them a little bit with the fork. They mash pretty easy, they're nice and soft. The smell's coming off of this already. It's gonna, this is gonna be pretty cool, I think. So they gave us a net weight and a drained weight. Yeah, if you drained off the liquid. So we were, we're using the by... net weight just for the record, this is a little annoying. <laughs> if you really wanted to toss it into a blender or food processor, you probably you could. could. Totally do that. I don't like to blend them up too much though, because it just makes more mess later. And I don't really like to use brew bags because they tend to just make more messes too. So you, it's kind of like, you just have to do what works for you. If you like a brew bag, use a brew bag. If you want to use a food processor, use a food processor. If you want to put it in a blender, put it in a blender. If you don't want to bother with it at all and just throw the whole thing in, do that. Yep. The difference is going to be pretty minimal in reality. So what he's doing by mushing them is he's trying to make more surface area for yep. the yeast to get to. That's it. Being microscopic, they're gonna get where they wanna get regardless of what you do. Just giving them a helping hand. Yep. Kind of like offering a step ladder, you know, just, just giving them a little leg up, mm -hmm. so to speak. A little, they don't have legs though. <laughs> you know, when you start thinking too hard about it, it gets weird, so <laughs> we're just gonna, Stop, right there. Okay, these are as mashed as I care about. All right, them. beautiful. Really that was a professional mashing job. That's right. Okay. So what are we doing now? Next, I have made some tea. This is just straight up black tea. If you wanted to use a different kind of tea, you totally can, but it's gonna come out different. I make this speech every time we use black tea because somebody always says, can I use Earl Grey? Can I use this? Can I use this? Can I use organic? Can I use this? Of course you can. You can use any kind of tea you want, but the point of this tea is for the tannic aspect of the tea. So that so, was one black tea bag. tea bag. The amount of water you put in it doesn't even matter because it's gonna get dispersed over the whole thing, but I happen to be using one cup of water. And was that steeped for five minutes? It was steeped for five minutes. Nextly, I have our yeast. We're using Lauvin 71B, also known as the Beast. And there's a reason why I wanted to use this one. I know it's a pretty good performer, but beyond that, it actually is known for bringing out fruity flavors. You know, like that, and like what's in the honey. Question. What? Yeah. Are you, oh, you're gonna, ah, never mind. Answered myself. So we're doing a half packet? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a half packet half of yeast. Packet. Why? Because I'm getting frugal in my old age. Actually, it's because this is my last packet of 71B and I have something else I wanna make with it. <laughs> and I don't have time to get to the store yet. Okay, I'm gonna do my patented folding method. You fold over once, you fold over again, so that those two folds cross, and then you fold the tab down, put a piece of tape on that, stick it in the fridge, good for months. Okay. All right, so we need to hydrate that. So we thought maybe we could use our syrup because it has some sugars. But my question is, does it have too many sugars? And what is the pH of that? It actually has 120 grams of sugars per can, so 240 grams. There's less than half a pound of sugar dissolved in that entire batch. So that should be fine. We're for, fine. Do but we you want know to do a pH reading? I'm gonna do a pH at the end. I don't think these are, oh, oh, we have the strips just right here. We're gonna take a pH reading on this because if it's too acidic, it could kill the yeast right away and we'd be dead before we even started. Yeah. So I'm gonna get out my handy dandy pH strip here and the eyedropper because you do not wanna stick the pH strip right in there. 
Somebody told me that after we did it last time and it's a bad idea. Looks like four, it's in a good range, it's fine. So what I think I'm actually gonna do though, you're gonna, you're gonna laugh at me. You're gonna use a little pipe I'm gonna, pipe? I'm gonna use a little bit of this. Just in case the sugar concentration is too high. What oh, we're getting at some water. is if there's too much sugars, your yeast can just basically explode. They, they, won't, they won't like it. I have the wuss, but it's dirty. By the way, I call it the wuss because it's the whisk of unusually small size. But we need to sanitize that. The wuss is now sanitized. And I'm just going to whisk this up a little bit. The reason I'm doing Are you this... whisking it with a wuss? I'm whisking it with a wuss. Say that three times fast. So what I'm doing now is there's a little bit of sugar in there, which will help to activate the yeast, and there's water in there. And what we're doing is we're making sure our yeast is alive, okay? That's just really all we're doing. It's not truly hydrating or anything like that. It's just proof of life. That's all it is. Yeah. Proof of life. So we're going to set that aside, and what we're looking is for it to foam up slightly. To Make a some foam bubble. dome. Okay. So what we have so far are lychees, black tea. It's already steeped and already had the tea bag removed. We have our yeast ready to go. I need to move this out of the way, otherwise I'm gonna spill something out, I just know. Next, we gotta get this into a fermenter. Now fermenting, the, the fermenter for today is going to be the two gallon plastic bucket. Wanna know why? There's a lot of stuff here and I didn't know how much volume we were gonna end up with, so that's what we're using. Can you just tip this a little bit sideways? I can. And just hold it there. I'm holding it there. Okay, go straighter, 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 straighter. Ta-da! Everything in. <laughs> Be right back. Okay, so now we have our lychees in there. The next thing that I want to go in is our honey. And we're using two pounds, and this happens to be raw, unfiltered Texas honey. It's um, really good stuff. We got it on Amazon. We'll have a link below if you wanted to get some. Reasonably priced, too. It's not uh, astronomically expensive. So, two pounds. Okay, now that we have our honey in there, let's mix it up. At this stage, it is okay to get some oxygen in there. So I'm literally just kind of swirling this around. We're gonna put some water in in just a second. I'm also gonna take our tea, which is still warm. It's not super hot, but it's warm. I'm gonna dump that in, because that'll help break up the honey a little bit. Do you want the paddle? Not quite yet. I'm having too much fun. If you get really good at swirling, you can kind of mix it this way. I don't really recommend it, because you can also make a mess. Though I did actually do a good, pretty decent job. Okay, now what I want to do is add some water, only about half the water that we're going to use. We have 80 ounces measured out, because I figure the 80 ounces with the 40 ounces with the honey, it's a little over a gallon, but then the mass of the lychees coming out probably end up with about a gallon of final product. Feel free to do the fancy pour. Get some air in there. All right, now may I have the mixing device. Oh, I dripped on my label. This is the spoon formerly known as the spoon of unusual size because I cut this one. <laughs> but I'm just gonna mix it. It's been sanitized. Everything actually has been sanitized in. Now, when I say everything, I mean all the stuff that we're using, every piece of gear, even the fork that I use to mash things, we sanitize everything because it is an important aspect of fermentation. We do not want any infections or bacteria that we didn't introduce into our brew. We want just the ones that we want in there, the fungus, you know, like the 71B yeast. Before someone asks, no, we don't sanitize the cans of the lychees. Because the they're sterile. The cans are sterile. The exterior of the cans don't come into play in this recipe because we're not putting the cans in there. Oh, we didn't sterilize the lychees themselves either. Um, one thing I want to talk about, we don't use plastic buckets very often, but we are using it for this one because of unknown volumes. But it's totally fine to use a plastic bucket for primary fermentation. You just want to make sure that you don't use a metal utensil on it because if you scratch the inside of that bucket, it could harbor infectious things that could cause problems. And if you decide you want to use chilies in any brew, don't do it in plastic, because if you do, you can only ever make chili brews with that plastic oh, bucket. Just be your chili bucket. We know that from personal experience. <laughs> Learn from our mistakes. That, that's kind of what this channel is all about. You know, we're here to screw it all up so that you see what not to do. <laughs> I'm joking mostly, but it is sort of true. We make mistakes all the time and things happen. 
Okay, I'm going to pour in the rest of our water. And the yeast, okay, let me show you what this looks like. So if you look at that, you can see some bubbles forming. It's showing a little bit of activity. If I let this go for like 20 minutes or half an hour, it would probably create foam. But it is actually alive. It is working. So we're going to move forward. But before I do that, did I'm going to take a picture. Did you stir this again after you added the final I bit I did water? not stir it again. See, this is why there's two of us. Oh, you stir. If anybody knows what commercial that's from, let me know. It's not a commercial. It's a skit. Whatever. <laughs> Anybody knows what it's from. <laughs> so what I want to do is check the pH. And there's a reason. If it's too acidic, it won't ferment properly. So we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. I don't expect it to be too acidic. Looks like it's in the green, which is usually a good sign. Oh yeah, we're at probably between 4 and 4.5 pH. Totally acceptable for 71B. What's next? Oh. Pitch our yeast. Pitch the yeast. I talked about the yeast so much, I didn't pitch it. Okay. Whoops. Don't drip it all over yourself. See the swirling thing? See that? <laughs> you know, it's just the way it goes around here. Pardon me while I clean up my own mess. All right. I also would like to rinse this guy out, so I'm going to grab some of the must. And... You know, every last yeast counts. They must fulfill their destiny. All right. She's still laughing. I'm laughing. I'm laughing. We're going to do a little swirly swirl here, and then we're going to take our original gravity reading. Yes. This is specific gravity. This is the density of sugars in our must or something like that. It helps us to know if we're in the right range for the fermentation we're trying to make. There is 240 grams of sugars between the two cans, which would add, you know, maybe 15, 20 points or so to that gravity. So it could be as high as 1.08 to 1.090. Uh, let's see where we're at. Looking like 1.090 on the nose, which makes sense. We have a 1.070 from the two pounds of honey and then a half pound of sugar, which if, as we know, sugar is 0.046 per pound in a gallon of must. So that's about 23 points for half a pound, making this 1.093, but we have a little bit more in a gallon, so spot on, 1.090. If you were curious, you can look at your hydrometer, and if you spin it around from that 1.090 to the potential alcohol, it'll show you the potential if it goes dry, which in this one is gonna be about 12%. Now, don't rely on that past today, okay? Don't use the potential past today but it just gives you a rough guide, about 12%, which is beautiful for 71B. It's probably gonna run it dry. All right. All right, so at this point we need to affix our lid. And sometimes this is problematic with the buckets. Yeah. So I'm gonna give it to Why I don't always use them. Have him do it. <laughs> They're kind of a pain and they don't always seal super well, unless you're Adam, one of our moderators. He uses plastic buckets all the time and they seal for him perfectly. So I just, you know, press it on really, really good and hope for the best, really. They usually work pretty well. Yeah. Now I need an airlock. Airlock. All right, so airlock just goes right into the grommeted lid, and we'll have our label goes on there. This goes in the fermentation station. What's going to happen, though, is fermentation is going to start occurring. The yeast is going to go to town. They're going to build up a colony, and within the next one to three days or so, we should start seeing some activity in that airlock. And by activity, this side goes down, this side will go up, and you'll see bubbles start coming out. Now, if you don't see bubbles come out, you want to take that lid off and look inside. If you see bubbles in there, it just means you got a bad seal in your bucket. All's fine. It's still working. Don't think that it's going to ruin your brew or anything like that. The airlock is just an extra safety, and even a bad seal is going to prevent actual bugs from getting into your brew, which is really what an airlock is for. If it got super, super active and was exploding all over the place, like spurting out, we want to use what's called a blow-off, which is just a piece of silicone tubing going into like a mason jar filled with sanitizer fluid. But that's the other reason for using a bucket. It's halfway full, which means it would take a lot plenty of, of space for overexertion to, to have a problem. Headspace and primary is not an issue. Don't let anybody tell you any different. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. I think I got it all. So this is going to go in the fermentation station. See you in a couple of weeks. It's been about three weeks. Time to take a check. Ugh.
First, the optical and olfactory inspection. I'm gonna give you a bird's eye view this time. Now, I know you can't smell it, but you can see in there, and you can see there is nothing untoward. The lychees are just kind of sitting there, giving up their juices. As for the smell, I can smell some alcohol, but I smell fruit. I smell flowers too. Yeah, it definitely, this, this smells and looks wonderful. So we're gonna move on and take our first gravity reading for that. Everything's been sanitized in star sand solution mixed according to manufacturer's directions. And I'm just gonna get down past the fruit. It's even looking pretty clear. So I have pretty high hopes that this is um, done. 0 0.992. All right, so I'm gonna do a quick calculation to see how much alcohol we have before I put this back in and move on. The likelihood that this continuing to ferment is slim to none, but due diligence, we are going to return it to our bucket and wait a week and check it again. Yes. So I'm using firm calc now to do the calculations here. So our initial hydrometer reading was 1.090 and, oh, temperature. One moment, needed to sanitize the thermometer, just the tip. I'm going to use the same temperature for both times because both times it was, you know, room temperature. So it might not be exactly perfect, but it's pretty close. 72.7. And the calibration temperature on this hydrometer is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So I put that in. That gives me a corrected value of 1.0915. So it does adjust it just a teeny tiny little bit. Final value is 0 0.992 and same temperature, which actually adjusted to 0 0.993. So they both went up by one point. That's, that's the point that I wanna make here. It really doesn't change it that much, but it's still a you know, good idea. So according to this, I have 13.4% ABV. Just out of curiosity, what would my old formula have given? 1.090 minus 0 0.992 times 135, 13.2. So, Pretty darn close. Yeah, pretty close. Anyway, so I'm gonna take this back out. And pour the sample back in carefully. In fact, I'm gonna tip this up a little bit so that I don't add any excess oxygen. That way it can run along the side rather than splashing. Splashing is what you want to avoid. Right. There is still some degassing going on in here, so I'm not uber worried about oxidation, but I wanna be careful. Put the lid back on, put my note back on. And goes... we'll see you next week. Yes. Okay, it's been two weeks. We got a 0.992 reading last time we checked it. What are we gonna get this time? Probably the same, I would imagine. I'd be shocked if it went much lower. Looking inside, and smelling, it smells so fruity. That's awesome. But it also looks perfect. There's no, there's no eyeballs blinking at me. There's no, no teeth bearing at me. Very similar to what it looked like yeah, last time. Just like last time. Surprisingly. All right. So, take a reading. Actually, more of the fruit has fallen. I yep. think last yep. time more of it was floating. This time more has fallen. So this is more of just a verification kind of thing. In other words, just because it's been a couple weeks for us doesn't mean that yours will be exactly the same. You wanna make sure that your reading does not change twice in a row. And ours is 0.992, so that's 0 0.992, which means this is done. So by done, what I mean is fermentation is complete. It's not going to ferment further. However, we do wanna get it off the fruit and we do wanna let this clear, even though it's looking pretty clear already. But uh, let's get this into the pitcher and start on the next process. Now, I like to pour the samples back into the pitcher carefully because if I pour it back into that bucket, all the leaves and everything in the bottom of that bucket is probably going to get disturbed. And by doing that, I get a little bit of a sample. I wouldn't call it my favorite thing we've ever made so far, but it's very young and we haven't sweetened it. We haven't altered it. We've done really almost nothing to this. This is just a tea bag, some honey, some water, Lalvin 71B and the lychees, which we're not done with those yet. So we want to rack it off of these into the pitcher. Racking, as we like to do, is an auto siphon. It has the cap on the end because there's some gunk in the bottom called lees and there's goop and stuff in there that we don't want. So I'm just gonna get it in here and get started. We do have a full video on how to rack 
on the channel, so that's why we don't make a big deal in every video. So we arrived for our picture and we're just at one... One full gallon. Yeah. 128 ounces. 3.785 liters, for those of you that use liters. And we have here a brand new fermenter. This is a 1.3 gallon wide mouth fermenter. So it's very similar to another one that we used to use. Um, this one should be a little easier to get. The only downside, doesn't come with a real lid. You gotta use the old cheesecloth and rubber band method, but we're gonna try it out, see how it goes. Anyway, before we rack this over here, more lychees, cause you know, why not? 40 ounces in the primary, we're gonna put 40 ounces in now too. So I'm just gonna open these up. And the reason why we're doing this is we really wanna bump up that lychee flavor. Yep. And make a mess. Apparently. Because that's what we do. Wasn't expecting that. <laughs> no one expects the... Spanish Inquisition. Yeah, I was trying to think of something to do with lychee, but... The lychee invasion? The lychee explosion. <laughs> All right, so now that we got our lychees. Uh, I have to say something. Smelling this and smelling this, I definitely smell lychee in the wine now. I didn't smell it at first. Mead, it's not it, It's not wine, it's mead. I didn't smell it at first, but now I totally do. So now we're going to rack this into that. So be oh, back in a minute. Be right back. All right, look at that. That's volumizing at. It's right it's to zenith. here. It did not look like this was gonna be big enough to hold it all. And as we're going, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and it, it, Took every last bit of it, so that's awesome. All right, so it does come with cheesecloth, and I did sanitize it. Yes. Because I don't want I would have it any... and have it again. It's it, what it I'm it trying to do. Okay. Comes with cheesecloth and a rubber band. And a rubber band. You know, they spared no expense on this one. So... <laughs> I'm joking, but, you know, they could have left the rubber band out. But you need a big rubber band, so, yeah. you know, laugh all you want there. Yeah, I know. But... I will say this, this is not my preferred method, but there's nothing wrong with it either, okay? Because we keep this away from where our cats can get to, nobody's gonna get in there, bugs are not gonna get through there, it actually works just fine. We do promote the use of airlocks, but this is no longer primary fermentation. Also note the design of the lip. It does have a ridge, so oh, that yeah. way that rubber band can fit in there, making sure that it's secure. It also gives that like old fashioned vibe. It does. It really does. It totally does. These new fermenters, I'm just they're loving so them. Pretty. They're so, there's something very visceral about yeah. them that I want them displayed. Like I want to completely redo our shelves and put the fermenters there. By the way, you can get these through Amazon. We'll have a link below. I also spoke with them and we're working on something together. I know what some of you are thinking. There's a possibility that this will re-ferment and you are right. I know there's some amount of sugars in here and I think we figured it out. Um, there's. 120 grams of sugar per can. We use two cans, so it's 240. So there's about half a pound of sugar in here. We did use 71B. 71B can be powerful. Question. It's also at 13.4% already. What? Oh, no, I was going to say, do we want to take a, a gravity reading, but it's still going to take time for the well, cheese to get there. you know, there. honestly, we probably should. Okay. And here's why. We diluted it a little bit with the juices. Right. So this way we'll know if it did change just on that alone. So yeah, let's let's do that. Okay. Now that we've put everything away and we're ready to move on. <laughs> There's one lychee floating. All the rest, oh, and he had some air in him. That's the only reason he was floating. So all the rest of the lychees sank to the bottom. That's a good sign. That is a good sign. That means we don't have to worry about keeping it moist. It's going to automatically be moist on its own. But you can see how cloudy it got from the uh, yeah. racking. I wasn't super careful racking it as far as getting sediment. I wanted to get as much product out as possible. It was really just to get it off those lychees because I know we're going to have to rack this again anyway. Yeah. So I'm expecting that this went up in gravity, okay? Just, just so you guys are aware. Because it should have. <laughs> we added sugars. Now the lychees themselves will have some that are not going to be accounted for here. We know that. But we're just going after the juices and whatever's in here. So not a lot. 1.002. Oh, that's like 10 points. It was 0.992. Now it's 1.002. So the reason we took that is so that if we check this in a couple of weeks, if it went down, we know that it fermented a little bit more and we know to let it keep going until it stops doing that. I'm going to just very carefully dump this back in. Now, because we don't have an absolute number on this due to we don't know how much of the lychees are going to give up their sugars or how much they're going to retain when we rack it, our Final gravity, our ABV is gonna be an estimation, but it's yeah. always an estimation because we aren't a scientific lab. Right. So there you go. Yeah, any 
you know, any calculations that you do are always approximations, any readings that you take are always approximations. So when you calculate all the errors on top of each other and you compound them together, you can be off by half a point to a point, and it doesn't really matter because in the wine industry, in the US at least, they can be off by, I think it's two points, a point in either direction. So if it's marked 12% on the label, it could be 11 to 13%. So if they can be wrong, we can be wrong too. I'm gonna get a dry spot here. I think that right there. Yep. Can't, can't put this on a wet spot. <laughs> what are we gonna do with it now? I'm gonna let it sit. Probably a couple weeks. Soak up some of those lychees, get some more flavors in there. We'll be back to show you then. All right, so it's been like two more weeks and well, it's just been sitting on these lychees. Let's give it a check and see where it's at. No, sorry, I did that super quick so that we didn't disturb anything. There's nothing untoward going on now. Nope, looks just fine. The lychees gave up all of their color, but that's normal. Let me show you what it looks like. What we mean by there's nothing untoward in there is that. It looks like lychees sitting in juice, nothing going on. There's no eyes winking at you. There's no hairs. There's no mouth, you know, there's Nothing to worry about. It's all good. Now, Brian made a comment. He said, I don't think that the lychees had much color to begin with. And you know what? He might be right. I they really were don't they remember. were kind of white. They were they were pretty white. But anyway, we're going to do another reading. And you might be saying, but why? You already did two. You're right. We did. But you know why? It's because when we added the lychees, it actually raised the gravity from 0.992 to 1.002. So I want to find out, did they ferment anymore? You also may remember when we took that reading after adding the lychees, we said, it's just kind of a guess reading because yeah. we didn't know how much of the lychee sugar is actually taken in that reading. Yeah. So this way, if there was any extra fermentation, we'll, we can calculate some of that into the final. It's not super important because you all know that estimation of ABV is just that, right? An estimation. Yeah. Looks like it went right back to 0 0.992. So I'm thinking... Yeast like the lychee. Whatever sugars were in there, that it. Now, what does that mean? It means that the lychee we put in there re-fermented. So they gave up their flavors, but they also gave up more alcohol. So about like maybe 1.3 or 1.4% more alcohol, not a tremendous amount. And I'm gonna dump this, we're gonna, we're gonna rack this into this container. So I'm just gonna dump most of this in very carefully. You know, everything's been sanitized like we always do. And the reason why I didn't just pour it right into here is because it'll disturb all the lease, so. On the smell, it's quite fruity. Ooh, definitely very dry, but it does have a, a fruitiness going for it. That's actually quite nice. The honey character is actually coming through. It's not bad for a 992 gravity and only a few weeks old. That's actually pretty decent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are we gonna do next? We're going to rack. Right. This is a 1.3 gallon fer fermenter. This is a one gallon fermenter that actually holds more like one to one, 1.2 but we want to have as little headspace as possible just to not oxidize. So I'm just going to move that over there a little bit and Derek is going to hold that in her lap like we always do. And just like we always do, we are using an auto siphon. I'm going to leave the cap on the end because, well, you know, there's some goop in the bottom here, also known as lees, that we don't want in our final container. Somebody's going to ask, do I even need to rack? Can't I just drink it as it is? Yes, you can. However, there's a lot of stuff in here. Any little agitation makes it go cloudy. Is it going to change the flavor that much? Probably not, but I'd rather not drink all that stuff. So that's why we rack it, let it sit for a while, and then we'll do our final. You'll see, it's coming. Okay, we racked it and see, minimal headspace. That's a good thing. If you end up with a little bit more, don't freak out. It's not the end of the world, but when you start getting down to like, you know, half of it's full, that's when you could get some oxidation issues from the uh, air being in contact with the wine for too long. But for now, we're gonna put an airlock on this. We're gonna put our note back on it. give it a little swirl? I will give it a little swirl. The reason for the swirl at this point is it helps to degas it slightly. So if there's any oxygen already in there, it can displace that and it helps with oxidation. If I can get it to go anywhere. I just thought there was so much Oh yeah, so much there's, gas. there's a little gas in there. The... See how the airlock's starting to go? It will degas all on its own. A lot of people have been asking, do we need magnetic stirrer plates and things like that for degassing? I mean, if you really want to go for it, but I don't really think that's necessary. I think that might be a little bit of overkill. We just let them sit for a while and they degas on their own. Oh yeah, there's there's gas in there. It's coming out. 
So stick the note back on and it goes back into the ferment station for another couple weeks. All right, it's been another week. This has cleared out really, really nicely. Can you see how clear it is? Yeah. It's very clear. So we're gonna rack it to a pitcher and then we can do the final adjustments process before we um, finish it. You've seen us rack before. If you haven't, we got a video on that. So we're gonna rack this and we'll be back in a minute. Okay, we racked and somehow managed to be right at 130 ounces. So we're like literally two ounces over a gallon, which is awesome. So next we need to do some adjustments, which means we need to take a taste. Oh no. It means we need a glass. And because we weren't prepared, because we put sound blankets up now, I don't know if the audio sounds any better or different to you guys, we put sound blankets up behind us, which cover the cabinets. Cause so, we're in our kitchen. Yeah, and the AC is still running. Hold on a second. Shut off. <laughs> Why? It worked. Thank you. So we're drinking out of a mason jar. Don't, don't question our methods. Well, question our methods. What am I talking about? Question everything. Please don't question us too much. We get we get enough in the comments. Just trying to teach people how to make booze. That, that's all there is to it. I don't even say booze very much. So this is super clear. I can tell you that oh, right yeah. now. That's a beautiful thing. It smells like lychee. It smells just like what was in the cans. It really does. Now this is very dry. This is zero point nine nine two. It does not smell dry. No, it's also at fourteen point five percent ABV. Okay. So it's it's moderately high. Some people call that very high for a mead. That's not really that high. It's barely a sack mead, if it is. It's not bad. There's a couple of flavors in there I'd like to see go away. At first I was kind of like, this is kind of meh. And then the lychee started to build. And if you're familiar with lychee, they can be kind of a subtle flavor. There's um, definitely lychee flavor. Oh yeah, yeah. But like initially I was like, I don't know getting much. I want it sweeter. Yes, absolutely. And Probably because this not. is a lychee mead, I want more of the honey notes to come forward. Right now it's just reading lychee and that's it. Absolutely. Thankfully we have more of that Texas honey that we used in the beginning. So we're gonna add some in. Now this is where a few people get aggravated with this every time and we apologize, but I have always found it's a little better to adjust to taste than to adjust to a number. Remember, we're not even at a U.S. gallon anymore. We're above, just a smidge above a U.S. gallon. So you might be at a U.S. gallon, you might be below a U.S. gallon. So if we give you a specific amount of honey, that's not gonna be equivalent to your volume of what you have now. But, but if we give you a gravity taste. reading, yeah. it will right. be closer. But there's also personal taste. You may like it sweeter than we do or less sweet than we do. So yep. adjust it to your own taste. Yep. Someone asked just today, can you just put some in a glass, make that adjustment, and then apply it to the whole batch? You can. However, there's going to be a couple problems. Every time you take a sip out of there, you just change the volume. So yeah. you need to know exactly how much volume, exactly how much you're adding, and you're working at a smaller amount. So the room for miscalculation and misaccuracy, or bad misaccuracy? It's, for accuracy. It, it's fuzzy math. Oh, yeah. It gets a little crazy. So it's so much easier to work. Like if we're working on one gallon. Just work on one gallon. No big deal. And I'm just going to add some honey. That was not a lot, even. I don't know. For some reason, that was very visually appealing to me. Looks it's kind of cool. Because it's so clear and you can see the honey. Yeah. And I do need a stirring implement, though. I happen to have one. Let me get one for May you. May I have the stirring implement? Absolutely. We don't do our magic trick anymore. I no. Miss, I miss our magic trick. We can try it again sometime. <laughs> it was surprisingly difficult to accomplish. <laughs> Although now it wouldn't be so hard, because now I know better on how to edit that. <laughs> um, one of the things I wanted to say, though, is when you do additions like this, you want to make sure you purely, completely, and absolutely mix it up. Yeah, right now we can see, because it is so clear, well, there's just a big blob of honey down there. Right, because if I don't mix this and then I take a taste, now I'm taking a taste on something that isn't fully mixed, so I won't get an appropriate tasting, and I might end up over-sweetening. Yeah. If you're not sure how much to add, start with less. If you, you got to put in a tablespoon at a time, do that. Because you can always add more. But, but you, you can't, take, can't it. take it out. If by some chance you do actually oversweeten, though, you can dilute this with, like, say, a dry mead or something, and it won't be exactly the same, but you can get sort of in the realm of less sweet and mostly the same taste. Now it's 
one of the comments I think that has come up is blending meads. And so we, we do have that on our list and we do intend on doing a video on that. But basically you're just you're just blending two together until you get stuff it. together until you like it. Yeah, it's almost like making a cocktail sort of. Yeah. Need more. I barely noticed it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time I'll start off with just a little bit to see like how much flavor change is happening when I do that. So this time I know needs a significant amount. Maybe not like pounds, but you know what I mean. A good glug. Yep. I don't mix it as well as you do. I'm, I'm, I'm creating too much surface tension. It's all in the fingers. <clears throat> Basically, you want to have most of your mixing occur down here at the bottom and very minimal disturbance at the top because that will limit oxygenation of the brew. O oxidation. Did I put too many syllables yeah. in there? Yeah. I do that. I, I, I don't know what you said, but I knew what you meant. I think you were trying to say oxidation and oxygenation at the same time. I was. So, <laughs> Oxygenization. Ox <laughs> I don't think I can even try to replicate that. Now. No. It was impressive, though. Oh, thank you. All right. That mixed up pretty easy. I think in total, we started with, I mean, it was literally just over 128 ounces. I've only added like four ounces, which is uh, a quart is 32 ounces. So that's an eighth of three pounds, whatever that is. But that's not taking into account the little bit of liquid that we keep siphoning off with our tastings, right. so it's a guesstimation. So I might have added close to half a pound at this point, between three-eighths and a, and a half pound. So that should raise that by somewhere in the 12 to 17 points of uh, sweetness level. Getting some honey now? Honey? A little bit. I feel like it needs a lot more. Mm. There's a difference now, mm -hmm. but I feel like it needs more. Mm -hmm. So this might end up being a sweet one. And that that's a funny thing. We don't set out to say, oh, we're gonna make a dessert mead or we're gonna make this. It's more of a, where does it fall on our palate we're kind of doing for what we like? The sculpture idea, if you will. Many famous sculptures, sculptors have said that it is the material that speaks to them and they're just bringing out what is inherent in the material. You no, know, that sounds so good. Nobody's gonna believe it, but and, that sounds so good. And that's what we're doing here is that we're just working with the ingredients, letting the ingredients direct us on which path we should go, right. rather than having a preconceived notion of this is what I want. Now, if you've never had mead and you have no idea what you like or don't like, I do suggest starting with a recipe and following it to a T. Do, do exactly what we did. You can also go to your local wine shop and see if they have any meads available. Then you'll know, okay, I like a sweet mead, but I didn't like a dry mead or vice versa. That will help guide you a little bit. And that way, when we say it's sweet, you know what we mean. We say it's dry, you know what we mean. But mead is like wine, except more so, because wine is different varieties of grapes. Well, mead is different varieties of honey, plus different varieties of fruits, which can encompass grapes and, and everything else. And, and then spices and, and herbs and teas and oh my god there's the it's limitless what you yeah. can do with meat yep, yep. so whenever somebody says i don't like meat i always say well what kind did you have yeah because usually they've had one or two and that's it and they just decided they don't like it and it's okay because meat is not that commonly known believe it right or not. and depending on what area you're in you may have a couple of meads you may have no meads or you may have a lot of mead to try we and, used to have more than we do now right and that and that seems to change like brian just said so Experiment with what you have available and then try to think about your own palate. You know, do you like certain type of wines? Do you like certain type of ciders? And that might help guide you on where you should go with your mean selection. I think I'm happy <clears> with that, <throat> mm -hmm. but I think it needs more acidity. Mm. I want I want that brightness that, that I'm not, just not getting. And I think I want citric acid. Okay, I can go with that. Do we want to take a gravity reading before I add the citric acid though? Uh, yes. Okay. Go. It's time. All right. To take a gravity reading. Now, when we say gravity reading, we mean specific gravity. Yes. As always. And why are we doing this? We're doing this so that we know we can tell you the sugar ratio based on how much honey we added. So that way you can use that same gravity reading if you want to replicate our sweetness. By the way, I'm estimating 1.018. I'm estimating numbers. Hat plus cactus equals tree. 
minus avocado. Oh, I was way off. Oh, no, I wasn't. Not too, not too, too far. 1.024. That puts this to like a medium sweet, um, a sweet even. And now we're going to make it acidified. Now, adding acid does a couple of things. First, I have noticed that in almost every single one year tasting, I always say, needs more acid. Almost every single time. So as flavors mellow, that little bit of brightness from the acidity Kinda. can overcome it, sort yeah. of. So that's a thing. Plus, it helps with preservation just a little bit. A lower lower pH means less stuff can grow in it. Yeah. So that's the acidifying good. a wine in particular is common practice in commercial wineries oh, yeah. as it helps with preservation. Right. And I'll check the pH of this when we're done so that we know what it is. Uh, let's see. So I'm using one teaspoon to start with. Probably going to use two because I found two teaspoons is usually the right number. But again, you can add more, but you can't add less. So you can't take it out once you add it. And this is just citric acid. This is not our acid blend that we right. use sometimes. This is just food grade citric acid. We feel that the lychee is really going to be enhanced with just that citric yeah. pop rather than the blend. Funny, it smells the same. <laughs> I think it needs the two teaspoons but there's a distinct mm. difference. That brightens it, brings the honey flavors forward, has a little bit of a citrus note. Oh, you agree though? A little bit more? Can I do more? Just a little bit, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna do another teaspoon. That's fine. This is coming along really nice. I'm finding that I like acid. Mm. Out of context? <laughs> be a bad thing to say. <laughs> Just like. <laughs> it, it didn't hit me until after it came out and I went, that expression hmm. i don't know but this is a nice way to alter flavors too without really adding a ton more sugars into it because it really didn't need the sugars the sweetness was there it just needed something to it was it was deadened i hate to use that word but it was deadened it was flat it was it was it was low now it need need to be brought up this particular citric acid, we actually get in large volumes because not only do we use it in our brewing, but we use it in our culinary efforts as well. So yeah. I'll make sure to link that as well as everything else that we use in the description below. And that, to me, that's just right. Amazing. It took a ho-hum, average, meh, and turned it into, wow, that's really good. That is a lychee mead. Yep, you would if 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 I handed you a glass of that, you would know that's lychee if you know what lychees taste like, and there's honey. So yeah. you would, uh, it, it's very obvious yeah. without it being cloying. No. And that's the thing too, when you add acid to something that's sweet, it cuts that yep. sweetness. So you get the flavors coming through because. But it's a pop. It's yep, yep. Because sugar is a flavor enhancer, much like salt. Yep. So by adding the sweetener, we got those flavors to come up. But it just started to kind of fall apart. Adding the acid back to it, brighten them all up. It's like turning up the volume. It like everything. activates all of your your sensors in your mouth. So they're yeah. more receptive to the flavor profile. And it's it's a really a lovely thing. And it's like my latest discovery. I know I do it all the time now, but it's awesome. All right, what's our pH? Let's find out. We're in the safe zone. Are we in the threes? Oh, we're, we're like three, I would say. Yeah, looks like three pH. So. That puts it in a very safe zone for preservation and things like that. So, yeah, it's all good. And I, in a year, I think this is going to be absolutely amazing. It's going to smooth so much. But motion detected at the front door. So those of you who are longtime viewers and even those of you who are new might know what we need to do next. We have added honey to this brew. So that means it's time to rack into a fermentation a vessel and then pasteurize to make sure that we kill off any residual yeast so there's no more fermentation going on and our brew is stable. Now, someone's gonna ask, because this is at 14.5% and we used Lalvin 71B, do we really need to pasteurize? While there's a possibility, we don't. We also know we like it exactly the way it is now. So even a little bit more fermentation would take the sweetness level down, yeah. would change the acidity level. Yeah. So I don't want it to change. So what we're going to do is, as she said, we're going to pasteurize. We'll be back in a week to show you how it finished out. All right, it's been another week. We've pasteurized it. It's ready to go. It's been sitting. Now it's time to put some scores on this. It did not clear super, super well. It's got, got a haze. It's not like mud, but it, it does have a haze. It isn't purple. No, it's like a six for haze. 
or clarity. It's not purple. Why would it be purple? Purple haze. There's some clarity, but it, there's a bit of a haze. It's not. There's a bit of a haze. Not that big of a deal. We talk about it all the time, but the haze really doesn't bother. It smells bother. like lychee. Wow, that totally smells like lychee. Which oh, is good boy. because it's lychee. It's lychee. It should. I get a little bit of honey in there. Yeah. Mmm. Oh, wow. Mm. That's got multiple levels going on. There's a lovely brightness from the acid that we added, along with the citric hit and the, the lychee. That works so nice together. And then it kind of, like, you know how peaches have like that? Yeah, yeah. There's like a, a certain, you can feel them rather than just taste them. It has that. It does. That's, that is... Multiple levels of complexity. When we though. decided to do this with canned lychees, I'll be totally honest, full confession time, I thought this was going to be not good. Yeah, I thought this was going to be crap. This is far from not good. Far from not good. Far. Yeah, yeah, far from not good. Okay. See? It's so unusual. Like, if you're not familiar with lychee, this would smell foreign. <laughs> because it's just such an unusual smell. Because it's, it's smell. fruity, so it's berry, it's citrus, it's all those things combined, which... There's nothing unpleasant, though. No. Everything about yeah. this is a pleasant experience. And surprising, actually. That that extra acidity we did gives it, like, that light tropical feel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, what it also does is it makes this not feel like it's 14.5% alcohol. It does not feel... This feels more like you're drinking a yep. cider. Yep, yep, yep. You could drink a lot of this before you even knew you were drinking. And then you would stand up and be like, oops. You would try to stand up. Uh, yeah. I mean, it is sweetened to 1.024, so it's on the sweet or sweeter side, but it doesn't really now, register as super sweet. Now, this me. is room temperature because mm -hmm. we just took it out of the fermentation station, but it has a cooling sensation yeah, for me, yeah. which it's is... A, this is a summer drink. It's lovely. It's mm -hmm. lovely. Yeah. Um, this on ice would be incredible in the middle of the summer. Mm -hmm. You know what this almost reads like? Almost. Not quite. A fuzzy navel. Mm -hmm. The the mixed drink it almost reads like a fuzzy navel, not quite. But a lower close. alcoholic, obviously. Yeah. So fuzzy I mean, navel. if you've ever had a fuzzy navel and you know what that tastes like, this is not the same, it's but close. It's, fuzzy it's navel adjacent. Adjacent. It's it's a fuzzy navel like product. That's something we still like need to make as a fuzzy navel. The neighbor to the neighbor. Yeah, it's on the list. I know. We just never get around to it. The list is so large. It really is. And we actually went through the list. We did. Got rid of a few things and got rid of some things that we actually did. And accomplished, which is basically what he just said. Yeah. All right. I need more. You need more I for need science? More. Yeah. All right. You need more too. I for, I am not going to say no. For science. This is totally a Derrida drink. Yes, it is. But I would drink this too, which is a little surprising. Um, I didn't expect to really want to want to to drink this? Yeah, that makes sense. I think the initial response to us seeing the cans of lychee on the shelf of the Asian market was like, we could do that. Do we want to do that? We are unsure, yeah. but we could, we could. We could ask a lot. Do that. Can you make this thing with this thing? Sure. Yes, you can, but can and should are two different questions. Yeah. We get a lot of questions that I, I answer that way too, and I'm not trying to be a smart ass to them, but it's true. There's some things that just because it will ferment doesn't mean you should. But to each throne, there are plenty of things that we know yeah. people that are near and dear to us absolutely adore, and we're just like, ew. Hey, whatever floats so, your boat. So, you know, we don't judge. No, uh, we really don't. I mean, if you're just starting out, I may guide you towards things that I know will ferment well and sure, work well for you. Because we want you to be successful. So yeah. that way you will continue and to enjoy the hobby and not be like, this is stupid of course, and I'm done. We are starting today one of the things that I've been telling people for years. Not to you, do. Not to do. A little foreshadowing. Dun, dun, it begins dun. with an M and ends with an S. <laughs> All right. So I would say if you like lychee or if you like fuzzy navels. We didn't give a score yet. Go ahead and make this. But let's get to store, score. So our first one is repeatability. Repeatability. Uh, okay. Okay. This was pretty simple. It's, I mean, I have the, the ingredients and everything right here. It fermented out dry, basic ingredients, um, added more lychee, we racked it, 
added honey, added citric acid. Pretty simple, nine, 9.5. I would say this is like beginner plus level. It, it's pretty simple stuff. Um, it I just takes a little fine tuning to get it right. The only downside would be is if for some reason you can't get lychee. Yeah, if you can't get, and I mean, you could probably get them from Amazon. No, we, really we didn't yet. use try. fresh lychee. We no, used canned. canned lychee and syrup. So and they sat on the shelf back there for like three yeah. months before we yeah. did it. So. so that should make it. I like things like that. That it doesn't have to be fresh. That right, you have to get right. it in season. Because though we know, there's something to be said both ways. But we know we have plenty of friends in the north who don't have access to tropical fruit, mm, and that's mm. completely understandable because you can't grow them there yeah. unless you have a special. We can actually center. get fresh lychee here. Um, we can. I could grow them if I had enough space, but I. You did, didn't you? I have little baby lychees. I don't okay. have full grown oh, lychees. Well. Oh well. Anywho, I'm babbling about plants, and I'm not going to go there because yeah. I'll take up all the time. Yes. So the next is... We, we did, was a nine? Is that what nine, we said? Nine, 9.5. Yeah, okay. I don't even write those down. All right. And then the next is our own personal enjoyment score. And this goes one through 10 with the occasional 11. And basically, if it's below a five, it's not something we enjoyed at all. We might even dump it out, to be honest, depending on how low it was. From five to say seven is considered good. This is a nice beverage. It's something I would, you know, I would, yeah, I would drink that. And then seven and a half to 10 and up to 11, this is the very good to greatness to excellence kind of numbers. So anything 7.5 and above, just consider that like top tier. It's just really, really good stuff. Wow. I am torn on this one because this is so not my wheelhouse, yet I like it. Yeah. And I'm trying to say, okay, what makes this not a 10? And what makes this not a two? You know, like what, what makes it better than that or worse than that? Uh, just all the stuff going through my brain, okay? Right. We also have to take into consideration that this is our Third, fourth, fifth, fifth, fifth tasting, tasting today. today. I've kept the samples to small, but uh, yep. you know, it's, yep. there is still that effect. There is that. Um, However... I think I think I have a number. I do as well. Do yeah. you? Because yeah. that sounded very very unsure. Yes, I'm good. All right, one, two, three, ten. nine. She did it. I she did pulled it. a ten. I pulled a ten. I haven't pulled a ten yet today. Yeah. Uh, but we've had some pretty good ones today. This this was a shocker. This was a sleeper. This was something I wasn't expecting, and now that I'm enjoying it, I'm enjoying it thoroughly. I have nothing that. I want to cut it down from. I am enjoying the sweetness. I'm enjoying the acidity. I'm enjoying the tannins. Okay. I'm enjoying the brightness. I'm enjoying the flavor profile. For me, it's a nine. I could I could stretch to a 9.5 if I really wanted to. Um, I was debating between those two. The reason why it's not a 10 is it's not really my thing, but I can I can detect the quality and the taste, you know, like the good flavors that it has. But there is a, a note, like in the three-quarter palette, that's just a little dull for me. Not bitter, it's just like a dullness. It's a strange, almost like lack of flavor coming through. It's kind of like on peaches, that flavor thing, but it's like the after effect of that. I'm, I'm doing the best I can to try to explain that flavor, but it's I, like a weird... I'm trying to interpret... Just a, a dullness. I'm trying to interpret that to me, and to me... A lychee is like an Asian grape. I don't like lychees. If that makes sense. <laughs> uh, I don't like them. When I was introduced to lychees, I'm like, oh, this is kind of like a grape, but it's different. She so, brought some home and we t we had them and I didn't really like them. We ate lychees. They're a lot of effort when they're fresh. We ate a bunch of things okay. all together. Spiky covers. And Brian was just like, what are you feeding me? And I'm like, just, just go with it. Give it's me an okay. apple. It's Give okay. me a peach. Give me a pear. A pear, even. Anyway, if you like lychee, absolutely 110. percent Oh yeah. If you like mead. lychee, this this is a great example of a lychee meat. It's yeah. just just that simple. Yeah. And uh, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. Bye bye.